Your next course tonight is hanging on to the end of summer here. This is a chilled watermelon soup with compressed watermelon, white currants, mulberry pickles, and chili oil. And uh, we, we really enjoy uh, some of these summer things that linger on into the early fall. And uh, one of the fun things about this one is the idea of uh, produce in particular falling out of fashion. And we'll talk in a little bit about our seed program, but uh, one of the things we've learned through some of these historic seeds that we work with is that there are things that we used to grow prolifically here in the area that have now gone away. And watermelon's a great example because now what we really want in uh, our modern kitchens is uh, the seedless watermelon. It's easier to deal with, it's less work, um, but what you oftentimes trade for things like that is flavor. And this is a good example of that. We, uh, we had ice cream watermelon grown for us and it's incredibly sweet. It's a really amazing watermelon, but it's loaded with seeds. And so uh, sometimes we have to make these sacrifices when we prefer one thing to another as things fall out of favor. But one of the cool things about this and, and a lot of the produce that we work with is that we really um, think about the idea of how as a, as a kitchen team, a restaurant, or as a chef, we process food. We would never just give you a slice of watermelon and say, here, enjoy. Uh, you can do that at home when you eat out. You should expect something more than what you can do at home because it's your hard-earned money uh, being given to the kitchen. And uh, here's a, a great example of that. And part of that for us is this concept of zero waste. And we take that very seriously here in the kitchen. Uh, when we look at watermelons, for example, what do you do with the rind? And we're, we're saving all those because we'll be pickling them later. Uh, we might even do a watermelon um, miso. And we certainly in the past have done watermelon sodas. We've done a, a fermented watermelon soda that was more of a savory soda that was really exciting. Uh, but the idea of zero waste is that food never ends up in the trash. For us, it is a failure when the food ends up in the compost bin. Uh, but we do have things that we can't do anything about. A great example right now is uh, the celery root or celery act that we often have on the menu. The outside skin of that is so loaded with dirt, it's just impossible for us to use. So that actually goes into the compost bin. The compost then goes to a community garden who uh, works it back into the soil. So it's not really wasted. It's just, uh, I, I think there's higher value for some things than, um, that we can create versus just putting it into the compost and certainly again never the trash. Um, one of the things that we get really excited about is working directly with the farmers and saying what is it that you're growing that's not selling? Sometimes it's a it's a produce that didn't turn out quite pretty enough because their bread and butter is the farmers markets but again as a restaurant we process things so if you bring me your blemished your ugly fruits and vegetables we're going to do something with it the nice thing there is i get a better value on the purchase but they have less waste because one of the things that really drives me nuts is showing up to a farm and we visit a lot of our farmers and seeing a compost bin loaded with literally bulldozers full of blemished vegetables that's food that could have been used for other things. And yes, it's gonna be composted, but again, to me, that's failure. And so uh, we work directly with our farmers and say, what's going in the compost? Give us a fair price and we'll take it. This course right here is a good example of all these different ideas uh, in one beautiful bowl. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you uh, appreciate all the, the thoughtfulness that goes behind a dish like this. And if you have any questions, please let me know.